Daggone it, good old Terry. There you go, laying out all kinds of stuff on the mat again for me to look at. Well, um, this looks like it's going to be a long thing. It's going to be pretty quick. Uh, just really briefly about plastic preparation. We're going to be using an old monogram Hawker Typhoon uh, fuselage set and wing set to do our paint tests with, and I'll be cleaning them in between each one. Um, so as I dirty them up and strip them, they're going to need to be redressed every time. Now, these old monogram kits, they got nice, shiny, uh, sturdy plastic, as does Hasegawa. But once Ravel took over monogram, you're going to notice the monogram kits have lost their nice, clean plastic, and they look more like this on the inside, just kind of dull and gray. Um, so just going to kind of quickly show you a few of the products you can use, the choice, some of the choices available to you. Um, there's a uh, very popular are the Novus one and two series. I think they sell a third, but I mean, I wouldn't worry about Novus three because it really, you, the scratches that are big enough to need three, you're going to be addressing with sanding anyway. But this is a two part. You basically, um, now you can rub all these things, whether you want to use a Q-tip or a, a section of paper towel. Um, and again, if you're using the bounty paper towels with that really thick, heavy stuff on it sometimes it gets a little I don't want to say scratchy but it will pick up things in the air that you know little pieces of sand or dust whatever's flying around and get in your plastic and actually end up scratching the plastic um, and it can be pretty rough uh, and rigid so some people like to use the blue auto shop towels and I use those fairly often but I also like the really cheap knockoff paper towels from the from the uh, grocery store so you can practically see through these things I mean you can pretty much see my hand there and so it doesn't pick up a whole lot of stuff and hang on to it that's going to rub in your plastic it tends to shred I shouldn't say shred uh roll up when you're using it um, and that's actually a feature I like because it'll damage itself before it damages your airplane your uh, model but Novus is really good stuff so you're going to rub it in with this just like you'd be waxing a car let it dry a little while and then rub it again and then you're going to take their plastic cleaner, which is a liquid, um, and uh, that'll clean it off. Uh, here's what it looks like, just like a car wax. Uh, you military guys, you probably remember this stuff, particularly the enlisted guys, um, which um, looked very similar. The only thing is I, I only use the Brasso as a beginning thing for badly damaged parts because it actually does have quite a bit of grain in there and it will leave swirl marks in your plastic so if you can skip over that that's good but the uh, Novus 1 and 2 is very good to use. Um, some people like to use auto wax as the Carnauba wax that's kind of more like a finishing wax uh, the problem is it'll attack paints and on bare plastic it's too smooth it really doesn't do much for you except make it shiny so that's kind of a Special utility I don't use much. You can find um, these specifically made for model things. The problem is they tend to dry in the packets and leak in the packets, as you can see here. Um, so I tried it out. It, it wasn't anything special, so there it sits. Um, some people, and I'm one of them, like to use the uh, auto products. Depending on how bad the plastic is or how good the plastic is, you can either use the compound by Magyar's excuse me, or the plastics. These are the things people use for their headlights and their wax jobs. You'll see the uh, the ultimate compound is very, very gentle. It's got a super mild abrasive. It's really good. Almost a one step. That's really good to use on plastics that are already in pretty good shape. But if you need something a little tougher, you can use the, uh, the, uh, the plastic, which is also really smooth, very mild abrasive, very good stuff. You know, um, then on the high end, you can go with the uh, Tamiya compounds. Again, another one of those products that's tough to get outside the U.S. Um, I find this about the same as the Novus products. They both do about the same job. I mean, if you take out your magnifier, you'll be able to see it. But to the naked eye, um, they're pretty on par with each other. What I use most of the time is... I'll use flits as my as my uh, go-to. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put it on with a Q-tip, and, uh, and then after that I'll go to the finish grade of the Tamiya, or I'll just take the uh, 
the Magyars and rub that over it. But let me show you, you can see here, this looks really good right now. But if I zoom in here and I tilt it, you see the, the gunk on the plastic there? It's got a few micro scratches and stuff on there. Some people use polishing wheels. I I dabble with them, but I, I, I kind of do the by hand thing better. So it's gonna take a little bit of flitz, about so much, just to show you as an example. And if I rub it in there, let me give you a little tilt here so you can see it better. There we are. And I just rub it in small circles. Now, you're probably not gonna see a whole lot of difference here because this, this is old monogram plastic. This is already in pretty good shape. I'm gonna let that dry just a little while, which doesn't take long out here in Hell's Armpit. It's pretty quick. Um, and I'm just gonna get my uh, paper towel. I'll use the Bounty, because I'm not too concerned about the finish right now. And I'm gonna give it a rub. I'm just gonna start out lightly, spread it around, and then I'm gonna increase my pressure. Some people like to go in the direction of airflow. I just make circles. When I'm, so when I'm addressing plastic, I just do it in circles. I always find that works well. Now, looks pretty darn good. Um, see that lamp? Now you want to see it get even better? Let me show you something else here. Now I'm going to get the Tamiya finish grade right here out of the box if it would like to come out. There we go. This is kind of funny. I always put these things back in the box and all I do is rip the box when I take them out and have to tape the box put together. I guess that falls in the anal care category, huh? But anyway, this is the black box to me a polishing compound, the finish grade. It's more of a polish than it is a rubbing compound. Just a little bit on there. And again, you don't have to use a Q-tip. Uh, why wash the deck with a toothbrush when you can use a mop, right? But um, it's just the way I do it. You can use a paper towel, t-shirt, cloth, whatever you want. And I'm gonna rub this on there now. Let it dry just a little while. See, it's already picking up a little bit of yellow stuff in there. It's doing its job. Throw myself off some more paper towel here. This is where I would go to the finer paper towel, but this is just a demonstration. Um, even a cotton cloth would be better, but now I'm gonna wipe that again, slowly, softly to spread around and then increasing the pressure. Turn it over. And then if you really want to get crazy, you can get your softer paper towel or your cotton cloth. You know, they sell those. And just, it's a quick fast motion, but nope, I really am that quick. I hear a couple of you. Get your head out of the gutter. Now you can see, just by looking, you see how it looks over here? That, that's pretty good plastic. It looks pretty good, reflecting the shape of the lamp and the two tubes. But when I move over to the polish side, now look what you can see. You see the big difference there? That is going to make all the world a difference on your paint, okay? Now, let's say I've been handling the thing around. Let me touch my forehead. I got a lot of it. And um, I was touching other things and building my model. And, oh, it looks okay. But then when I look at it, oh, look, it's all gummy and gross. This is where you're going to want to wipe it clean, okay? So uh, let me make myself a little room here. This is where you're going to want to uh, get your alcohols or your soap water. Some people like to use liquid detergent. Some like to use alcohols. Some use even a, a weak paint thinner. And uh, what I do is I just use the alcohols for this and um, a little bit of paper towel. So you can see we've got different types of alcohol we talked about earlier. There's um, the 70%. IPA, the 99% IPA, and then that camping stove alcohol that we had in the camp in the big box store. Um, let's see which one we want to use because um, they're all different strengths. Um, let's start with a dirty inside of a wing here. Um, and I'm going to take the 70% alcohol, 70% IPA, and uh, I'm going to put a little bit on a paper towel here. 
Ooh. Got an alcohol problem. <laughs> and I'm going to rub this. And you see it. It's trying to take it out of there. But it's really kind of hard. It just really doesn't get it out. Okay. Now let's go to the other wing. Actually, I'll even do you better. Um, I'll take out the 99%. And since this is the hard part to get out, this stuff doesn't want to come out. I'm going to take the 99 per the uh, the uh, IPA, 99 percent. I just grabbed the wrong one, and I'm going to put it on the paper towel, and it'll finish the job. Look at these split. Gone. See, gone. So that's the difference between your uh, your 70 um, percent versus your 99 percent now the other wing let's take let's use the uh, camping alcohol and uh, see how that works for us so we'll put a little bit of that on the paper towel this is the denatured alcohol also called you might see it on a few cans called SLX or SDX or something and it does an equally good job of getting it out of there now I prefer to use over that. I prefer to use the 99% uh, the IPA. It's a little bit more expensive, um, but the way I look at it is this: um, the camping alcohol tends to leave just a little bit of, sh of, of I don't want to say film, but just yeah, hair. Probably doesn't do anything, but it's there. Uh, but the bigger deal is that's um, that's a harmful alcohol. That's not stuff you want to get on your hands. If you're wearing, you know, if you're wearing gloves, great. I don't like wearing gloves when I do things. It just interferes with my feel, and feels a big part of doing anything like this. So the uh, IPA, I mean, that's that's hospital stuff. That's on people's hands, and they're rubbing it on you all the time. So that's what I prefer to go with there. Now this is also another opportunity. Let me show you here. You can see this is not shiny at all. This is the inside of a wing, right? Just one more time, let me just take one more opportunity to show you what this flitz can do. Um, I'll just rub this in here again, and I'll do the same thing as before. I'll use the finish grade to me afterwards. Just take this, and I'm going to rub it around. Not the rougher the plastic is, the rougher you're going to have to rub it. And uh, you might even need to start with something a little more abrasive. Okay. Let that dry just a minute. And let me cut this off because I don't want that crap on the inside of my hand the next time I use that, the other end of the Q-tip. Um, I'm going to give that a little rub. Get it out of there. Now I will take my Tamiya. My Tamiya high grade finish grade I should say finish grade and it doesn't have to be to me a finish grade you know like I said if you use the Novus 1 and 2 you'll get similar results and that's readily available it's really easy to get but uh, I'm kind of a creature I have it um, when I find something I like I tend to stay with it which is why I'm driving a 20 Soon to be 22 year old Toyota pick em up truck. Had an 81 before that. It lasted me forever. I had a good taste in my mouth. Got the 2000 and it's still running strong. Same thing with my modeling products. So you can see, look at this here. Now look at that. How nice. Whoops. Let me see if I can get this thing to angle right for you. See how nice that looks? Because it's the inside of the wing, it's harder to see. But, uh, you can really see that's looking good in there. In fact, if I get something nearby it, let me put my clippers near it. You can see it even reflects it on there. So the unfinished side, you don't see a darn thing. See? The polished side, look at that. You're seeing it, see? So your plastic prep is quite important. All right. Boring stuff's over. Let's do a little spraying now. Hey, guys. We're back again here. It just kind of occurred to me, uh, my kind of overlooked another method to make your plastic really nice just quickly address that um, you can use all those pastes and liquids and such I showed you but there's another way to do it um, and that's to get some of these polishing sponges I don't want to call them sanding sponges but polishings 
sponges or buffing sponges. Um, they're pretty easy to follow. Step one, step two, step three. Hey, it feels like Family Feud, doesn't it? Step four. Um, they're also available in sticks for those of you who want to use them on smaller areas. Um, you can get these at uh, beauty supply stores. Uh, I've never set foot in one of those places. Um, I'm, I'm married to a beautiful girl inside and out. Wouldn't trade her for all the tea in Japan, even if you threw in the cute little waitresses serving it. But I do get these online. They're easy to find on Amazon. But uh, you can do that as another way to prep your plastic. Um, I, I prefer to use the paste and the liquids better, though, because um, these th these old monogram kits with the raised panel lines, I'd probably not mind using these because it's going to sand it down a bit. But when you get a kit with really fine surface detail like Edward or Tamiya, one of those two, um, I don't really like taking firm things to them um, unless I really have to. And the, uh, the liquids and the pastes are going to be more... Um, you know, more gentle on them and won't harm them. Um, now, moving on to the priming. Um, like I said earlier, it's not an absolute must to do this, but it's a darn good idea. And here's a classic example why. You're going to see on Hasegawa kits frequently and old monogram kits a lot. Uh, you see right here what looks like a dent in the wing, right in this little circle I'm making. It looks like a dent in the wing, kind of. It's a, uh, it's not a dent. It's, it's a discoloration. It's, um, I don't know what all goes on in injection molding and everything, but you're going to see these things. And, um, if you're painting with metallics, those are really going to stick out. If you're painting with, uh, thin gloss, it's going to stick out. So another benefit of priming is the priming is going to cover that up and you're not going to see it. So, um, speaking of priming, um, I told you I'd be telling you a little bit about the primers. Uh, my three favorites are the uh, Mission Models primers, um, the uh, Tamiya Fine, and this is uh, pretty important. Make sure when you're buying this that you do see the word Fine on the can or you're just getting some pretty rough uh, primer that you're going to end up having to sand. Um, and then my very favorite in the whole wide world, the Mr. Hobby's Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500. It comes in white, uh, I believe mahogany now, and uh, gray and black. And I even mix colors to make my own customs. Um, I'm gonna paint one wing or fuselage. I'll paint these some gray and some black. So you're gonna see how the primer base affects your painting. Um, that's really an advanced technique, but it kind of gives you a little head start here. If you got a good base, it's not going to disagree with the paint you're putting on it. Um, and I'll also paint one portion, um, we'll announce later, um, with no primer at all to show you why it's a good idea to prime, especially with water-based acrylics. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to do all that behind the scenes. There's really nothing to show you with priming. You just mix your primer one-to-one. -one uh, is usually a good starting point. Some like to go thinner, like two to one, with the uh, paint. And you just play it, spray it on there and then uh, you can rub it with some super duper duper fine sandpaper or a paper towel or a scotch uh, scuzz brush. Um, or, you know, you might not even, if it's a really, really good primer like these, you won't need to, uh, to rub it at all. Um, the Mission Models, great primer. I use it here and there for you know, sometimes I'm using their stuff, um, or if it's a, a whole flat piece where I'm not worried about it coming off, but this is really pretty thick stuff, and it takes quite a bit of thinning and a high shooting pressure, see what I'm talking about, to get it out, but um, once then it comes out okay, it's just I've had trouble with adhesion on it over curved surfaces and complex surfaces. If it's something flat like here, you're going to be fine, but when you get up around things like this um, or you know these uh, elevated portions where the actuators and trim tabs are um, it can come off so I use this here and there but not terribly often but these these are good bets um, not pictured um, is Badger Steinle Res um, tried it once absolutely loved it 
but it just wasn't for me because I had to shoot it through too big a needle at too high a pressure and it was tough to control where it's going. Um, but a, a, a excellent primer otherwise. Um, there are good primers. These, like I said, don't do it because I said so. Um, but these are the ones I like. And if I was going to be trying new things, I'd probably try these out first. So I'm going to prime these and I'll be right back. And um, I'll talk to you some more as we go. Back again. So everything's primed, ready to go. Um, our first piece we've got is a uh, the left wing, which is not primed at all. You can see I did take the uh, Novus 1 and 2 to it, these ones here, and uh, prepared it with that. And you can see, well, not exactly as nice as the uh, Flitz and the Tamiya finish compound. It, it's still really darn nice. Um, camera's really not being fair to it. it. It actually looks better than you're getting to see here. But this is going to be our test piece for um, Unprimed. I sprayed this left fuselage half with the Mr. Surfacer 1500 and you can see it does not hide any detail at all. It holds down nice and tight. I sprayed the right fuselage half with the Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. Same thing. Nice, tight, hugging finish. Pulled right down on there beautifully. And I'd like to introduce you to something I forgot to mention earlier, and that's this Mr. Color GX2. Um, it's not a primer. It's just a gloss black is what it is. GX2, make sure you have the GX series on there, not just the regular uh, number or a C or anything. But this is the um, best gloss black that I know of out there. And I used it on a wing as a make-believe primer. This stuff, you don't, if you've primed something earlier, like say you're gonna do an airplane with a gloss paint job and you decide to use GX2, don't try to put it over something that's already been primed. It likes to go down on bare plastic best. If you try to put it over a primer, it's not gonna shine back at you. And this is really reflective. I mean, look at how you see, you're seeing everything around here on it, see? Highly reflective. Excellent thing for the base of the metal work, which we'll get to when we talk about that much later on. But um, this is really good to apply if you're going to be using gloss paint jobs. Um, so they also have a GX, oh, I want to say 13, 113, I can't remember the number, but they have a GX series clear and I believe a white. They're hard to get a hold on, but uh, if you're going to use a gloss um, base, you're going to prime. The GX series are good. They're not primers, but they're really good to set down underneath. So um, I'm going to tape these all off for each different type of the paints we're going to be using. Uh, we are going to be spraying Vallejo's um, Panzeri series um, US Verde Oliva, which um, for us gringos, uh, U.S. Olive Drab or U.S. Verde Olive. Um, then we're going to be using the Ammo by MIG Shaka Brown. I know that means brown. Um, and we are going to also be using the uh, Mission Models. I just picked any old color and that was their uh, 118 Extra Dark Sea Grade. It's an RAF color. And on the black, I'm going to throw a little bit of MIG ammo yellow down there just to kind of show you the difference you're going to get on the different types of um, colors of prime that you have underneath the paint. And um, you'll see that for certain things, it can actually be to your advantage and for other things, it can be kind of a pain in the rear end. So let me tape these off and um, we'll get back to this. Well, good morning, everybody, on this third day of December. Um, we've let the parts dry overnight and um, I took a quick look at them while I was charging the battery up, which, and um, I'm really glad I did that instead of going right into the test too soon last night because uh, a couple things really surprised me with it. Um, I'm going to kind of show you something here really quick. I've got the benefit of daylight coming through the big garage door, but um, 
I'm gonna be turning the lights on and off as we go through this, because um, the lights really kind of interfere with the results on the camera or the phone here. I've got this weird apparatus for lighting I use. I've got a, uh, a two tube um, kitchen type of light up there or garage type of light. I've also got these uh, clippable lights and I stuck the uh, these daylight LED bulbs. I've been using these a long time. Um, daylight LED bulbs with the 100 watt light equivalent. So they're really, really intense. And when I turn the lights on, you're gonna see things change pretty big. Um, for example, if I pull this up here and it looks a certain way, now I turn the lamp on, you see what I mean? It really, it, to the eyes, it's telling you the truth, it's really accurate, but when you put it on the camera, it's a little different. So um, we're gonna go through these results with different light settings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and turn these lamps on and uh, Kind of get the max intensity um so we can get the best picture of it so now what we're going to do is um we're going to put them to the uh durability test um we're gonna i'm not a big fan of the toothpick test i mean really who scrapes their models of toothpicks but you do you know your fingernails sometimes will hit it so yeah we'll try that but i'm a big believer i am a big believer in the tape test and um i'm just gonna do everything wrong that you could. I'm gonna push it down really, really hard. And I'm gonna rip it back instead of pulling it, you know, on an angle like you should. Um, kind of give it the the worst case scenario because as careful as we try to be and do as much as we try to do things right, we do screw things up once in a while. And um, you know, these are the kind of things that new modelers end up doing anyway um, until they've learned better. So. Uh, what we're gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of tape here. And I'm just gonna drag it across. Um, each wing and then I'm going to give a pull on that tape and notice I'm using Tamiya tape I'm not using my cheap uh, regular hobby store tape because really um, I, that's that's just not fair um, so I'm going to just use these pieces of tape and yank them across I'm not going to make you watch me put the tape on each time but uh, We'll do that for at least these first two. So you see I'm pushing these down pretty hard. I burnish them down pretty hard. And I'm even going to kind of use my nails to rub them in so they get really good and sticky on there. You'll notice I didn't do any detacking with them. I'm just doing it the bad way. And let's rip this one off of here. And I'm going to go put my fingernails under it and roll it back and give it a bad rip here. So... You can see it's going to take a little bit of doings here, so I'm just going to go off camera, finish this tape ripping test, and then we'll show you how. It okay, so um, I went through the tape test with the Tamiya, and the result was the only ones that lost anything, well, actually, everybody that got primed lost nothing, even on the complex surfaces like the raised blisters here, um, you know, the exhausts, anything. Nobody lost anything except and no big surprise here at all. Um, the one that was not primed lost quite a bit. Every paint across the board lost something, okay? And so the lesson learned, no, you don't absolutely have to prime, but it's a darn good idea to prime, okay? Because honestly, I mean, if you don't tape, if you painted these things and you didn't touch them too much and you didn't touch them with tape, it'd probably be all right. But you can see any little thing and that stuff's gonna come off. I mean, it really doesn't take much. I mean, I just drag my little, you see what I mean? I just do anything on this and it just loses so much paint. Uh, see what I mean? It just, you gotta, hey, look at that. I didn't even mean to do that. Boy, am I awesome. Anyway, um, th it just doesn't take much to make you start losing things. I'm just barely touching it. So I can do that with these other ones. And um, with my thumbnail and you see just really a little bit tiny came off here it just the primer does a good job of keeping you out of trouble there now as far as the finishes go um in fairness i'm not going to go with the unprimed one we're just gonna call that the lesson learned wing and leave it over there so this is the uh fuselage half that was painted with the mr primed with the mr surfacer 1500 gray and uh, we'll start out with the vallejo again it had all night to settle down and put its makeup on and try to make itself prettier, but it just didn't do the job. Um, you can see, I mean, that's, you know, looking at this and thinking back to, uh, you know, when I was in the military, and I think I said eight months earlier, I was actually, you know, counting my reserve time, it was eight years, but 
Oh, yeah, I got to see a lot of neat things and a lot of armor, but it was all gray. But I imagine if it, it was green, it'd be the same. But you can see they do kind of have that texture, so I can see why those armor guys like this stuff uh, for their stuff. But they're, you know, those vehicles are rough surface. They're not smooth like an aircraft or, you know, even more so automobile modeling. So I guess you can get away with using the Vallejo on that, except I, I, I still won't use it because it's... it's between the, the finish for aircraft and just the nightmare of cleaning the airbrush. And um, I was talking with a buddy of mine who um, used to use Vallejo, and he's a convert now <laughs> to uh, lacquers. But um, he would tell me the brass in my airbrush cup might have been the problem. But, you know, even at that, I mean, I'm not willing to buy a new airbrush and everything to accommodate a paint's bad properties. So um, it's just... And even at that, it was, you saw it on the needle. It was down on the in, inner guts where there's no scratching. It just, ah. I'm not going to ride that horse right now because I'll never get off it. But you can see it just doesn't look good. It's pebbly and powdery and no good. The MIG ammo is a little better. I think the sheen, it has a little bit of a shine to it. That kind of helps. But if I get, really get it out here and turn it, you can see the same thing in the light there. Same kind of problem. The yellow I was more wanting to show you, it's the same paint brand, just I just wanted to show you the difficulty you're going to get getting good depth on it um, without anything underneath it. Now this is the, uh, look at that, the, uh, this is just mission models un, unhelped, just mission models and thinner. Uh, very flat, very flat finish. Um, I bumped this up a little bit so it's got some stuff on it, but you can see it lays really flat, really tight, doesn't hide in detail. Um, the mission models with the future um actually it really kind of surprised me now the light again the light is really intense let me try turning these off see if you can get a better look at it and see what it looks like it lost its pebbly texture um it really smoothed it down we'll see how it stands up to being handled and tested but it really did kind of surprise me to be honest and um I might have to say a little, um... That I'm sound. What? I'm trying to say I'm... What? It really turned out better than I expected it to, and it certainly looks a lot better than it did last night. Uh, there's a wing half with it on here, and there it is. Let's, instead of it, it's the tip edge, this one over here. And, well, you can see where the tape was, clearly. I mean, you can, in fairness, you can see that with all of them. Um, but if you don't tape over it, I guess it's going to be okay. For some reason, it didn't uh, show where the tape was on this one. I think that might be because uh, on this one, I used the GX2 Gloss Black, which isn't going to have as much... Uh, you know, ridges in the road for the paint to bite into as the uh, regular uh, primer does. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say that uh, future surprised me there. And um, you know, there you are. <laughs> so, but let's turn the light back on and take a look at how the appearance of all of these is now, uh, getting back to that portion of it. So you, you can see now, this is the one that was painted with the uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 black. So you can kind of see, um, you know, remember that, what color is the dress thing that was a craze a couple years ago, a few years ago. You can kind of see um, the difference in color on each one between a black primer and a gray primer laying underneath it. And now I'll do that for you again with one of the lamps off so you can get a not so intense uh, thing. But you can really see it on this one, see that? Um, it's really more visible without that intense lamp on it. You can really see the differences um, on how the color of what's underneath your paint can affect it. But getting back to the subject of sheens. So you can see that the... Uh, same types of paint, water-based acrylic, can have a really different um, appearance. This Mission Models paint um, is much smoother than the uh, ammo in the Vallejo. And um, the, uh, the strength of these three um, on the tape has been similar, though. 
Um, now on the gloss black, you know, the GX2, so you can really see clearly, totally clearly where the tape has been on these. It's not as bad, again, and I've so got to admit uh, my surprise to it. I mean, it's there. You can see it, but it's not as grossly obvious as it is on the Mission Models one. See, I mean, you can see it at all angles here. Uh, and you can see it pretty good here. The yellow doesn't really do as much favors, but the brown, it, you can kind of, you can see it there pretty well. And on the, uh, this was the Vallejo that I overpainted with the blue and I was going to go fix it. But when I started remembering how fun it was to clean that airbrush, I decided, screw it, we'll just leave it. But anyhow, um, so we can see how the appearances look on them. Uh, now I'm going to give them the old finger rub test here and see if I can get my clean, my unclean, filthy, nasty, nose picking, armpit scratching hands to... Uh, mess up anything on the paint here and again we're not going to bother with this it's not fair we we, we know don't prime it nothing's going to good's going to come from that so let's see if the paint got scratched up from my fingers um let me kind of kill this lamp for that so we can get a better look uh, a little bit but not too bad i mean my fingers got a little powder on them of all colors so something came off on all of them yeah, not too bad from the finger handling. Um, this was the future, because I'm really curious about this future. Maybe that surprised me once. I'm going to see if it's going to surprise me more. Yeah, it kind of, you see, it's kind of coming off in here. Um, and down here, it's a little bit coming off. Let's see how it did on the gloss. Uh, Yeah, you can see, well, it's, that's the screw up one. Yeah, you can see the else kind of, you can kind of see it up close where the, uh, the riveting and where there's raised detail, which we all love so much. Uh, it started losing it from the finger rub and then we'll go to the other half and uh, see how that, that fared about the, uh, same thing. So nobody really got hurt too bad by the uh, finger rubbing. The aqua gloss side held up really well. Very well. So now let's do the old fingernail trick here and see how that goes. I'll just drag it across once in each direction going with it and against it. So with it, against it, uh, with it, Oops, with it. Well, we'll start against the first and we'll go with it. And then this way. Now we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll go with it. And then against it. Okay, I'll start here. Uh, yep. Pretty heavy, obvious scratching. Let me see if the lamp's going to help you see it or Henry is. Oh, there you go. So if you guys ever go to modeling shows, you're going to have anywhere from great big auditorium cafeteria lunchroom stuff where the lights are so high it doesn't do you any good and then some you're gonna have they're gonna have really good lighting which is gonna make everything stick out so uh the brighter the lighting the more intense the lighting the more things are gonna look bad so i'm gonna use the intense lighting to kind of get you an idea so you see it shows up both directions here on all of them pretty badly um and that was the Mr. Surfacer Black Primed. This is the Mr. Surfacer Gray Primed. Again, same thing, the scratching. And I don't even have, you know, I, I don't really have very long nails at all, you know, so. But you can see, nobody survived the fingernail test. And the gloss was the worst of them all. No surprise, again, because the gloss is a slick surface. Not a whole lot to bite into. Now we're gonna do the toothpick test. Uh, we'll just give it a couple scratches each way. I've got to do these in different areas so I can tell what was what. And again, this is unfair. I mean, in all honesty, no one's going to drag a toothpick, but people do bump them with knives. They bump them with tools, uh, you know. So the toothpick test, you can see, that also, no surprise, went badly for everybody. Very badly. Um, and again, the worst recipient of all, no surprise, was the GX2 because, again, it's slick and it's glossy. It's not going to give much to grab to. So, water-based acrylics, um, 
there's the results on those and how they went. Uh, let me give you a, a quick wrap up and we'll call this one done in the bucket. Okay, so uh, we're done with the water acrylics portion. We covered the Vallejo, uh, regular old Vallejo um, model color, I believe is what they're calling it. Yep, I've looked at that label a thousand times. Brush painting, I still can't remember what it says, but uh, the Vallejo model color, the uh, MIG ammo acrylic color, and the Mission models paints, the three, uh, the three front runners on the water-based acrylics. And... Um, the we you know i mean like i said i know that people are just gonna torch this but uh I, the vallejo for airbrushing that's just not any good um it's good very good hand brushing but airbrushing i i would not recommend um you have to be a special kind of enemy for me to give you that stuff to do um the big ammo was a little a little better uh problem I had with it is similar results. I mean, it was a lot clean. I mean, honestly, it was a lot easier to clean the airbrush. A lot easier. Uh, but the re the results visually were about the same. It just, you know, it colored it. It colored, you know, and remember, I used yellow, so that kind of gave a little disadvantage. But it gave the color, but the texture was the same, which I didn't care for. Um, for trucks, tanks, those kinds of things it's not going to be mattering to you guys probably too much but to aircraft builders and especially the car builders uh yeah it's a it's a it's a down but again brush painting it's great stuff the mission models paints um yeah i was talking with a guy last night on uh the previous video i made to this one he was talking about he just doesn't like the stuff he's telling me why yeah he's, he's got a couple valid points on it um it's definitely um an acquired taste for uh those of you who've been using other paints I mean it's shifting gears it's um, everything's differently and that's typically a turnoff um, you like to be able to do move you can move across um, acrylic and, and lacquer lines fairly easily a lot of the same things are gonna be a lot of the things are gonna be done the same but when you're going from acry regular acrylics or lacquers and then you're shifting to mission models and it's it's like you see the video where they reverse the bicycle so that when you do this, the wheel goes the other way and someone's been riding a bike their whole life and they can never, no, they cannot ad adapt to that backwards steering on the bicycle. It's kind of like that for them. So they really don't like it. It's uh, so I see where he's getting at, but you know, I've been using it so long. It doesn't bother me much. Um, but if it was something that I was to start today, I'd probably have similar feelings to it, you know? Um, but I like the stuff. Um, the uh the future surprised me um i think i'm up to three uses <laughs> for it now um i did a um off camera between us i did a really intense side by side between the part that was done with the uh, future and the side that was done with the aqua gloss and looking at them together uh like that i can see the future does look a little sludgier reflecting the light when you look for it but uh, once it settled itself down, um, it turned out pretty nice, and I'm thinking that might be attributable to the, the cooler temperatures that we've been having here. It had more time to fall down than it's been getting in the warmer season where it just dries pretty quick. But one thing I can guarantee you is that this aqua gloss side in six months to a year is going to look like it does right now, and this side of the future is going to have all kinds of micro cracking and problems. And um, I can back that up because remember I told you yesterday about cleaning your pipettes and your airbrush right away when you're using the aqua gloss because it'll glue it shut when it dries. It's really strong. Uh, the uh, the future floor wax it won't it doesn't do that. What it does is when it dries in the tubes or the airbrush, it tends to kind of get f long, flaky. Kind of um, if you ever cooked your uh, your eggs too long in your pan um, and there's that little flaky stuff of the eggs on the bottom after you take your eggs out it gets that kind of a texture and um it just when i squeeze it it almost looks like long uh like little flake icicles coming out of the tube and it had you know if i let it sit in the airbrush overnight when i clean it it's a similar thing similar problem so i guarantee you this is not going to look good uh in a number of months and i guess if you have a temperature controlled humidity controlled environment like a house or a museum it might be fine but uh it um 
It has never failed to disappoint me in that spectrum. But for right now, it does look good right now. Um, uh, and, you know, I know a couple guys. I know one guy in particular out here. He, uh, he He's huge on future. And um, he's got a very kind of an elaborate process of applying it and thinning it and all that stuff. And he makes it look pretty good. But he keeps his house at the same temperature all the time. The sun never hits him. Uh, you know... And even he'll tell you he only gets that result about 70% of the time. And, uh, you know, I can go with, you know, 85, 90%. 85, you're kind of pushing it. But 90% success rate I can live with. But 70%, that's just too, um, you know, if it was a math test in school, you're going to flunk. So it's, uh, well, these days, who knows what they're giving you free credit for. But back when I was taking school, 70 was an F. Um, so, uh you know, the thing with future, I mean, you know, do what you're going to do if you like it, you know, and you're satisfied with it. That's all fine. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't float my boat. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the, um, the acrylic lines. Um, the next one I'm going to take on is going to be the, uh, Tamiya acrylics. And that's going to, that shouldn't be too long a video. That's, that's really good. That's really good paint. I love that stuff. Um, it'll, We'll show you how to spray that and a couple tricks with that stuff. And we'll put it to the test. In the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning these parts and redressing the plastic and everything. This has been kind of a long one. Um, I don't know how long the lacquer one's going to be. And it's not because lacquers are difficult. It's just because there's so darn much you can do with them. Uh, so um, the, the meat and potatoes of this whole... Uh, water-based acrylics portion was for those of you who might be interested in them for whatever reason um but i think the the lesson to come from this if there's even a lesson to come from it is uh yeah it's not the most preferable thing to use i'd go with acrylics or lacquers or you know even enamels um but for those of you who just want to paint inside your house and you don't really care too much about how it turns out It'll be fine for you, but if I had to pick one out of the three, it would be the mission models. It's a, it's a tougher process. I don't want to say tougher. It's a more elaborate process. It's a little more finicky than uh, the others, but out of the three, it's the one that comes out looking the best. Um, and that's just my opinion, so take it as fact. I'll see you in a little bit, or I'll see you in a lot of it on the next one that's coming out. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as always, if you liked it, like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, just zip it. Zip it, Scotty. Don't tell anybody because, uh, you know, because. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks again.